everybody. It's the one and only WWE superstar Ricochet. You're watching Brett Alive. What's going on, guys? Brett Alive back with another video, and today we have the Week in Review, episode 46. Yeah, it should be 46, right? I think we're on episode 46, but yes, guys, this is a Week in Review setup where I talk about Raw and SmackDown in a setup style. So without further ado, we are going to jump right in. Starting over here with the first match of the night, it was Angel Garza versus Humberto Correa. Such an amazing match. Uh, the super kicks in this match were absolutely insane. Such a good match. These two up against each other is just so freaking cool. I do not think this is the end of us seeing Humberto Carrillo versus Angel Garza. I do not think this is the end because Angel Garza did get the best of Humberto Carrillo tonight. He did end up beating Humberto. So, yes, I, again, I do not think it's the end of that rivalry because that match was freaking amazing. But, yes, very good match to open up the show between those two men. Moving over here first, actually, it was Buddy Murphy versus Angelo Dawkins, and then right right after, no, right before Angelo Dawkins was, was about to uh, beat Buddy Murphy, Seth Rollins comes in, breaks it up, and then there goes the bell. So basically, Buddy Murphy did lose, but then again, he didn't really lose. Uh, but yes, and then at, right after that, Montez Ford challenged Seth Rollins to a one-on-one -on -one match. Montez Ford, Seth Rollins, and then Seth Rollins ended up winning clean, man. So the Street Profits basically made a fool out of themselves by losing to both men. I, I know Angelo Dawkins didn't really lose to Buddy Murphy, but he kind of did because Seth Rollins broke it up. But then again, not really. I mean, it's hard to explain, but yeah, that was pretty interesting right there. Not my favorite part of the show. Not the best matches there, but again, not bad. Moving over here, Aleister Black versus Eric Rowan. But before this match, Eric Rowan, I'm sorry, Aleister Black actually got attacked by the club backstage. As I was saying, AJ Styles, Carl Anderson, and Luke Gallows attacked Aleister Black before this match, right before his match. And then Aleister Black still went out there, and he still beat Eric Rowan after they friggin' attacked him backstage. And luckily, Aleister Black did move out of the way when Eric Rowan was about to ram him into the steel stairs, because that would have been freaking insane. But yes, Aleister Black did pick up the victory, and it was an amazing match, in my opinion. Moving over here, Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar come out. They were basically just saying more spoilers for the Super Showdown in WrestleMania, how, Bra how uh, Brock Lesnar's going to be Ricochet, and then he's going to go on to beat Drew McIntyre. Basically, Paul Heyman just revealing, quote-unquote, spoilers, if you guys can see my fingers. And then this was pretty cool. Brock went over to the announce table, and then he held up the title. Thought that was pretty freaking awesome. Let's get a good view of that. Thought that was cool, but then again, the promo didn't really make any sense. Uh, moving over here was Ricochet versus Luke Gallows in a pretty good match. I mean, the match wasn't the best, but the ending was where it was at. Ricochet hit a wicked, a wicked shooting star press on Luke Gallows. Luke Gallows was literally, he was, he was not that close to the ropes. He was literally nearly in the center of the ring and he hit a shooting star press. That was freaking insane. Amazing ending to that match, even though the match wasn't the best in my opinion, but still pretty cool. Moving over here, it was R-Truth versus Bobby Lashley in a one-on-one -on -one match. Not my favorite match of the night. Pretty freaking weak, if I'm being honest. Uh, R-Truth was supposed to have a Truth TV segment going on with special guest Bobby Lashley and Lana, but then it turned out to be a match between Bobby Lashley and R-Truth, so that was kind of dumb. And then R-Truth obviously lost. Bobby Lashley speared the crap out of him, so yeah, that's what went down there, and I couldn't really care less about that. Moving into the main event of the show is Randy Orton versus Kevin Owens. Randy Orton versus Kevin Owens, and this match was pretty good. Seth Rollins and the AOP and all of his team come out, try to distract Kevin Owens, of course, and then the Viking Raiders and uh, the Street Profits come out and all that team with like uh, all those guys, and then they fought the they fought the AOP and the Monday Night Messiah out of the arena. It was just left with Seth Rollins trying to distract Kevin Owens on ringside, and they did do so. Randy Orton was able to get Kevin Owens down and pin him, but the ref, before this match, later in the night, I was like, oh my gosh, there's something up with that ref. I've never seen that guy before. What's up with that ref? And then here he comes doing another match uh, regarding, of course, Randy Orton and Kevin Owens, and he counts to three super quick, helping Randy Orton. That was very interesting. I'm like, wait a minute, what the heck just happened? So he just helped Randy Orton freaking win the match, and then right after this, uh... Kevin Owens got super mad at this guy, picked him up, taught him a lesson, stone cold stunner, and sent him through a freaking table. That is how Kevin Owens does it. He doesn't care who you are. He doesn't care if you're a fake referee. He's going to send you through a table. He's going to stun you. And Seth Rollins is like, I've, I had nothing to do with that. Obviously, he did have something to do with that. He had a freaking Monday Night Messiah shirt on under that referee shirt. That's insane. But yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. I thought that was actually something pretty interesting in a long, long time on Monday Night Raw with this... Um, 
uh, fake referee helping out uh, that team. I thought that was pretty freaking cool. And then one more thing, there was also a women's contract signing uh, for the Elimination Chamber match. Winner faces Becky Lynch at WrestleMania. Didn't have time to set that one up, but uh, yeah, that happened, and then basically it ended out in an all-out brawl. Becky Lynch and Shayna Baszler went at it. Pretty interesting. And then uh, Becky stood tall and got Shayna out of the ring. So yeah, that wasn't half bad, but yes, guys, that was Monday Night Raw. Stay tuned till the rating at the end of the video, and without further ado, we're going to jump right into SmackDown. All right, guys, continuing the week interview with SmackDown, which was amazing. I thought this show was absolutely amazing. Of course, with the John Cena return, which we will get into, a bunch of different things, the Goldberg Universal title thing. We're going to get into all of this stuff. But, yes, I thought SmackDown was really freaking good. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Starting over here, well, at least at first, it was Bailey versus Naomi in a one-on-one -on -one rematch for, of course, Super Showdown here on SmackDown. And then that match got interrupted by Sasha Banks. She interrupted it right as Bayley was a, maybe about to lose. And then Sasha Banks started beating up on Naomi. And then here comes Lacey Evans to help at Naomi. And then it turns into a tag team match. So then it's Lacey Evans and Naomi versus Sasha Banks and Bayley. And then in the end, Naomi was able to pick up the victory for her team by pinning Bayley, the current SmackDown Women's Champion. So that's very interesting. You never know in the future. We could get a rematch between these two. Of course, Naomi and Bayley for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Maybe include Lacey Evans in that. Maybe include Sasha Banks in that. Maybe a fatal four-way. I think that would be really awesome in the future. But yeah, that was a pretty decent, decent match of the night. Not my favorite match of the night, of course, but it was decent. Moving over here was Daniel Bryan versus Curtis Axel. Honestly, in my opinion, I think Daniel Bryan deserves way more than the match with Curtis Axel. Uh, Curtis Axel had Drew Gulak on ringside, or more like special guests on commentary, basically kind of like training him on. So I guess Curtis Axel doesn't have Bo Dallas anymore. He has Drew Gulak. Uh, but Drew Gulak has been hopping around everywhere. But yes, uh, Daniel Bryan, Curtis Axel. Daniel Bryan, of course, was able to pick up the victory with the LaBelle lock, tapping out Curtis Axel. And then, yeah. Uh, Drew, Gulak, Drew Gulak was living on ringside. He was very angry with that. But, yeah, Curtis Axel lost. And, I, honestly, again, I think Daniel Bryan deserves way better than a match with Curtis Axel, to be honest. Moving over here, it was the main part of the show. John Cena, man. John Cena returns. He's coming out. He's like, you know what? I, I think WrestleMania should not have John Cena. I think it's time for the new talent to show what they can do. I think... It's a WrestleMania without John Cena. And I was actually getting like, oh my gosh, no way. I actually started believing him. I'm like, no way, John. You've got to be kidding, dude. You're my second favorite wrestler of all time. You cannot be not at WrestleMania. And then he starts walking up the ramp like, no way. This is actually happening. He's not going to be at Mania. And then the lights start going out. <laughs> Bray Wyatt the Fiend, who currently or um, recently just lost the Universal title to Goldberg. That was absolutely bullcrap, in my opinion. Didn't film Super Showdown reactions, but yes, that was bullcrap, in my opinion. But yes, Bray Wyatt lost the Universal title, and now he's looking for a match against Cena at, at WrestleMania. Bray Wyatt points at the Mania sign. Cena nods his, he nods his head. The lights go out. Bray Wyatt's gone. And yes, it's going to be John Cena versus The Fiend at WrestleMania, and I am hyped for it. Not too happy still that Bray Wyatt lost the title to Goldberg, but I still think it's going to be really good. John Cena and The Fiend, I think that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, moving over here was Bobby Roode versus Kofi Kingston. In a pretty decent match, not going to lie. There was some pretty cool controversy on ringside with Big E being kicked out of, the, uh, kicked out of ringside. Dolph Ziggler literally helped out Bobby Roode throughout this entire freaking match. Literally. Dolph Ziggler is the reason why Bobby Roode won this match. So many distractions, and then Bobby Roode was able to roll up and pin Kofi Kingston. Of course, Biggie got kicked out because of Dolph Ziggler with a distraction and everything like that. So, yeah, very interesting. I thought it was an amazing match. The outcome a little disappointing, of course, with Robert Roode winning. Bobby Roode, whatever you guys want to call him. But, yes, a lot of distractions from Dolph Ziggler gave Bobby Roode the victory. Thought that was pretty decent, I guess. Moving over here was Braun Strowman. And Shinsuke Nakamura, or at least it was supposed to be Shinsuke Nakamura and Braun Strowman, a one-on-one -on -one contract signing, and then somehow Braun Strowman's like, you know what, I'd face all of you guys if I had to. I know it's going to be all of you guys out there. And then Sami Zayn's like, you know what, I'll take your word up on that. It's going to be us three against you, and they all sign the contract, and then they all attack Braun Strowman. They send him through a table. 
they assault him and then they stand tall just like that. So yes, at the Elimination Chamber, it's probably going to be Shinsuke, Sammy, and Cesaro in a three-on-one handicap match for the IC title. But if these guys win, who gets the IC title? I mean, that's going to be very interesting to see. But uh, yeah, Braun Strowman get, did get put to a table just like that. And of course, as the contract signings always do, they always end in a catastrophe. But yes, guys, that was pretty decent. Moving over here, this was probably one of this was probably my favorite match of the night. It was Miz and John Morrison versus the Usos. Uh, yes, this was very cool. This move that you guys are seeing right now, this was done to John Morrison. I just don't have a John Morrison action figure, so I just put the Miz out there. Of course, again, this move was performed on John Morrison, not the Miz, but this was the craziest move. It was like a modified Panama Sunrise that Adam Cole does off the top rope to um, John Morrison. I'm like, oh my God. Literally, my reaction was the same as Michael Cole's. Just, oh my God, literally out loud. Oh my God. It was crazy. And then right on the other side of the ring, another Uso is perched up and then hit the frog splash right after, pin John Morrison, and then they beat the SmackDown Live Tag Titles, uh, SmackDown Live Tag Champions. So yes, the Usos are definitely in the running for a future match. Of course, there is going to be a, fi uh, a five-man, oh no, a six-tag team uh, Elimination Chamber match at Elimination Chamber, so that should be pretty freaking awesome. But yes, this match was insane the Usos again did pick up the victory. Moving over here, last thing I'm going to be talking about in this video, we have Goldberg in the beginning of the show basically just saying, who's next? You're ne who's next, basically? So, yeah, Goldberg is the brand new Universal Champion, if you guys did not know. Of course, at the Super Showdown, he did be beat Bray Wyatt. Still very disappointed about that. I think Bray Wyatt should have held it. I have no idea what's going on, but yeah, I uh, just can't believe it, man. I wanted to see The Fiend versus Roman Reigns. I am just kind of disappointed with Goldberg, not going to lie. Uh, but yes, it's going to be... Uh, so Goldberg's like, yeah, who's next? Roman Reigns comes out. He says... I'm next. I thought that was the perfect line for Roman Reigns. So, yes, at uh, at WrestleMania right there, it's going to be Goldberg versus Roman Reigns for the Universal title. And I think that should be a pretty good match, even though I did want to see the Fiend Bray Wyatt versus Roman Reigns. But we are still getting John Cena at WrestleMania, so that's still, especially against the Fiend. So that's still going to be pretty good. But, yes, guys, that was SmackDown. That was Raw in the setup style video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to smash that like button. Comment down below something awesome. If I were to write Raw this week, I would give Raw, eh, I would give Raw six. Not gonna lie, it was it was good. Don't get me wrong, but again, it was okay. SmackDown, I'd give a freaking nine, dude. I. I honestly thought this show was amazing. I thought I had good matches. Weakest match of the nights was right here. This woman's match right here, and then Daniel Bryan uh, and Curtis Axel. But everything else I thought was solid. Everything. John Cena, all these matches in the ring. Everything set up in the ring was awesome. Everything outside was kind of weak. Besides John Cena and Bray Wyatt. That was freaking awesome. But yes, guys, that was SmackDown. That was Raw in a setup style video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Brittle Live! Out. <laughs>